Hey friends, today I am here with renowned astrologer Deborah Silverman. We're talking all about the four elements. So we are talking your astrology chart, but really the four elements and what they mean and how understanding them will give you greater understanding of you. Deborah, anything to add to that? There's only one of us here and it's you. So you better figure out who you are, commit to who you are and be your individualistic self because boy, We've been waiting for you. Oh, don't forget to hit subscribe. You guys are going to love this conversation. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to Better Together. When you know better, you get better. That's what we do here every single day. Our quote for today, that's how we begin to change the world. We heal one person at a time and we start with ourselves. That was Deborah Silverman speaking to Kevin Undergaro just a few minutes ago. What? Mm. We're going to talk about that in a second. Heel Squad, welcome back. Special edition of Better Together because we have a renowned astrologer, Deborah Silverman, in studio with us today. And we are going to be talking about how to use astrology to uh, heal yourself, um, the importance of elements and discovering yourself, so much more. We just actually had sessions with her in the backyard. In the hot mosquitoed backyard. <laughs> so I've got, by the way, this new product that I discovered. Um, it's called All Better Co. It's uh, an, an, I guess, organic um, don't scratch pen. And so there's elements of CBD in here. It's like an all natural mosquito bite or bug bite cream. And I've got that all over me because we got bit the fuck out of, excuse my language, everybody. Um, Deborah's face. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that was my fire talking because now I know my elements. Thank you. I know my elements. She so, learns like a speedball. So long story short, Deborah was flying in. I was going to be putting together this huge like heel event today. It got canceled. She had already booked her flight. And then somehow by the grace of God and the universe and all the connectors, we were supposed to be together today, so she came anyway, and we did. Um, what is the process exactly called? It's you, called four E. Four E. So you created this to work with your clients and help them understand themselves better to using, heal themselves using the four elements. So, so Deborah comes, and we're in the backyard, and we're doing the four elements, and, and your chart, and my chart as well. And then uh, we were going to come in and maybe, you know, do a little show. And then all of a sudden she looks at Kevin. She's like, should we do you? And then Kevin is about to pitch it off probably to you, Kelsey, or to Elaine. And I go, no, he needs this because he always gives it to everybody else. Sorry, Kelsey. Sorry, Elaine. And, uh, And boy, did he need it. And anybody who listens to RGF knows he's quite exhausted while Deborah's getting to the bottom of why he's so exhausted and uh, is intervening to help him uh, get better. But it was really, really powerful. I love when I get to go through the process and understand it rather than just interview somebody about the process. Because our first interview, I mean, it was like explosions were happening. I was like, oh my God, this is unbelievable. She's amazing. And now I get to see it kind of live in action. It's like two sisters. You look like just like a little Gemini sitting over there. (laughs) It's funny. Like, um, you know, I I told you when I first started having my chart read by astrologers and and good astrologers, I really started understanding myself better because, wow, do you hear my wheezing? Excuse me, everybody. Um, That's the allergies out here, I guess. But um, I I couldn't put to words some things or, or things that I... I, I knew, like, I know I'm very fair. I, I know that I'm um, freedom. Sensitive. I'm very sensitive. Freedom's a really big thing for me. But until someone was able to put those things into words, I'm like, oh my God, I feel so understood now. <laughs> Excuse me. And so um, today was like a whole other level because I'll have you explain the process to everybody, but it takes kind of the reading to a whole other place. And let's start by talking about the reading, because that's much more accessible for people. So what you discovered was how much water you had in your chart. Like, people come in knowing their sun sign. 
mm-hmm. easy because you can tell what day it is based on where the planets are moving. So every single day, the sun moves one degree. So we always know that on June 15th, it's going to be Gemini. What we don't know is where the moon is and where all the nine other planets are. So the beginning of a chart is being able to look and go, oh my goodness, she has three planets in Cancer. This is not a normal Gemini. She actually has this real high value for her home and for her family and for the animals and for playing house and being able to be. So that insight gives people permission, like with her husband had five, four planets in Scorpio. So understanding that they do have a self-sabotage part of their character Mm -hmm. and they are incredibly focused and they have this incredible ability to get things done. And then finding out, oh, but wait, he's double Aquarius. So then there's a genius sitting here. So you learn these different parts, put words to it. Mm -hmm. And then the person goes, oh, you know me better than my mother. Like, how did you do that? And what my favorite question is, how did that even work? (laughs) <laughs> like if you spend more than, t- like if you even ask yourself, why does that work? Yeah. How did the planets have the ability for me to look at your chart and then x-ray vision go whoop, and then put words to it and then you feel so seen? So what is it? It's magic. I wish I knew. It kind of makes me mad. I think it might have been, this is a big stretch, but I think it was, an, it's 4,000 years old. It's a system that has passed the test of time astrology. Your grandmother knows what sign she is. My grandmother knew. Like we've been talking about astrology forever. It's passed the test of time because it's the architecture that lives inside of your head that describes personality. And all I can suggest is the people that created it I don't know who they are. I wish I yeah, did. Who I, created I, I it? I keep calling them. It's in Egypt. It was first found in Mesopotamian Egypt. They found these hieroglyphics. Same hieroglyphics we were looking at today yeah. were back 4,000 years ago. Oh, yeah. That's hieroglyphics. The Gemini Egyptian, sign exactly, and all that. It's all Egyptian hieroglyphics. And they could look at the sky and they could identify what constellation. And this is the tricky part. How did they know 4,000 years ago how fast the sun, the moon, Mercury, Venus, and Mars Ooh. moved? So I'm going to say, Ooh, can I say it on your show? Yeah. I think it was... Uh, advanced intelligence that's beyond ours that had some level of responsibility to give us the psychology of the human condition Mm. so we could take the high road and figure out what we're doing down here. So I have such great respect for whoever it was. I sometimes want to make a phone call, like the 1-800 number, where did this come from? But no one really knows where it came from. All I know is it's a benevolent wisdom. I know. Like real hard, cold chills. It's a benevolent system brought to us by a higher intelligence trying to help us fall in love. And so astrology is simply like, I fell in love with you and with your husband. I did. I really. (laughs) We fell in love with you. But but it's so real because I got to see you. I got, and I saw the purity and I saw the intention and I saw your motivation and the quality of, why is it that Maria, we all listen to you because you're real, but you know how you meet certain people and I look at their chart and I go, "Uh uh-huh. They did a very difficult chart. They're hiding under the system. They're not being authentic. And I then get as an astrologer to say to somebody, uh, no, that's not real. Stop pretending. Here's what you really are. People are artists and they don't admit it. They're musicians. They have an incredible gift as a mother and they aren't doing it. And they come to see me and I go, excuse me, what are you doing in business? Or they're really good at being a mom and they have a business partner in them that like they could really go into. So I get to say to people with x-ray vision, here's your purpose. And astrology is a doorway to give you back to yourself. Now, the trick, and you would know this meeting other astrologers, is sometimes they talk in this funny jargon that you feel like, huh? Like your Neptune's in conjunct your Venus from your second to your first house. And therefore they're like, can you just say if I'm going to live or not? Because that was very confusing. Yeah. And so my gift, and I trained, I've trained 22 certified astrologers on my site where people can go and guarantee they'll get a reading, will answer the questions like, what is my strength? What's my purpose? What's my challenge? Where do I sabotage? And it all comes from the stars. <laughs> Oh my. So bananas. I, it makes me a little crazy. As a Gemini to a Gemini, yeah. I'm like, I wish somebody would explain it, but I find it funny that no one ever asks the question, where did it come from? Like, if you spend more- I never have asked that. Nobody and ever asked that. And that's why, just when we were doing it, I'm like, yeah, where, where did it come from? I guess we just kind of assume it's been around for a long time and there, something that stood the test of time maybe is for a reason. And you know what else we can't describe <clears throat> and we can't pass the test of time is love. You can't see love- but you believe it's true. And when you meet someone, there's no evidence, but you can feel it. Same thing with the stars. You don't have to figure it out, but you know it's true that Mm. a Gemini is a Gemini and there's no arguing. So just because you can't explain something, just because you can't see it, has nothing to do with magic. 
Ooh, write that down. Wow. Yeah. So if you, I love how you're thinking. I love your Pisces. If people, if I could inspire you to start thinking out of the box and opening up your heart to magic, to love, to the invisible world, to a higher intelligence, it will get this very heavy planet Earth, which is riddled with despondency and depression and this word called anxiety. And you come up and out from the astrologer's point of view and look back down at us and you go, oh, they're so cute, those little people. At least there was a system built to help them raise their vibration, and that would be astrology, because we're basically a little, yeah. the humans. Yeah. <laughs> what a funny design. Well, what an interesting thing. You said earlier that, you know, you get to see people, and we always talk on the show about what a gift it is when you see somebody, right? So if there's a barista at Starbucks and they're killing it. Like I'll always be like, you're so great at what you do. And thank you for coming in with a smile at five in the morning, because I know that's a, you know, not a common thing and I appreciate it, but it's so great when people see you or when you can see them, but that's your gift and your job every day I know. to I, see people. I love like, going to work. It's so cool. And that's why I have a school. And in the school, people come in, like your Kelsey. Kelsey, by the way, yeah. And you know, Taking Kelsey your class. Can, and they don't know, like to your point, they can't speak to we don't have a language for personality types. Like we're starting to with human design and with the Enneagram mm -hmm. and with astrology. But when you start to realize that you can actually look at your child, we'd had this conversation, you look at your kid and you go, that personality type, they don't like to talk. Mm -hmm. And I had one of these kids. And the worst thing you can do is try to make them you. Because the mom wants everyone to be their echo. Yeah. Ooh. So the real gift of astrology coming to a school and studying it is you get to see yourself. You get to understand your husband. And then I just think it should be the president of the world should say everyone has to study it. <laughs> no, seriously. Well, even like, you know, with kids, right? We're, we're hoping to have kids. And, and so... Uh, now I'll also think about it from a different place where, okay, not just for myself, like it'll be great to know their charts someday to really know how to parent them and, and how not to try to, because, you know, we all just want everybody to be the same. Unfortunately, that's kind of like, we all have to fit into whatever that mold society says we're supposed to fit into. And so then we push people against their grain. I mean, I was pushing myself against my own grain and for so many years, and now I'm going with the grain and it's so much more pleasant. It's such a better experience than trying to do what just because you should doesn't mean just because you can doesn't mean you should. Um, which after I started saying that, all I did was hear people say that. But um, but yet there's a difference between what, you know, you're innately supposed to do or what your natural calling is to do or your natural inclination is. As opposed to, okay, society says I'm supposed to be this, so I'm going to go be that. Or even worse, judging yourself for what you're doing because you think it's not okay that you talk too much or you mm -hmm. talk too little or that you're a messy person. You're like judging oneself and thinking we should be different. That's equally a problem. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the gifts of astrology. I feel like, remember when you were a kid and you'd go to school and they would give permission slips? Like yeah. you are allowed, you can go out to the hall now and they'd say, I feel like I write permission slips all day long and say, you are allowed to talk. You and do. I I do. That's what you did this afternoon all I know. day with I us. I wish I had a pad of permission slips. You need one. I know. I think someone should make me a pad of permission. We'll make you them. We'll make you the them. Cutest thing. Yeah, I already was thinking about it in my head. I'm like, oh, I'm going to make him. But um, it's but, a really big thing in life that yeah. once someone gives you, to your point, one of our deepest longings for everyone is to be seen and to be loved for who they are. And when you think of your best friend or the dog, it's the dog. The dog looks at you with those incredible, and you feel so seen and so loved with mm -hmm. no inter interruption, no interpretation, no judgments. And that's what I love to do in my mm. work. And that's what I teach people. How do you look at someone from through the eyes of love and see who they are and then be able to distinguish it and articulate? In the future, I really believe this, the school system will be built in that when you're a kid and like I did this once in a school system, I pretended I was Harry Potter's assistant and that's what they, I did it. I went into the school and I went into every classroom because my kid was going to this private school and I couldn't afford it. So I said, I'll make you a deal. If I can work with every single classroom and I'd have the kids sitting in the room and I put the water, air, earth, and fire kids. So the little water kids were all like super quiet and really shy and scared. And the air kids were like raising, excuse me, excuse me. And then the earth kids were sitting upright with their little sharpened pencils. And the fire kids were like, can we go now? And I called it, I named it. And the kids got it immediately. One of the kids, it was cute. Her, um, she said, 
my mom must be water because when we left our old house, she cried. And then when we got to the new house, she cried again. (laughs) And then one of them said, I think my brother must have been fire because my mom says he laughs so loud, he has to go in the other room. Wow. But they got it. But think about what that does for a kid to understand it's okay for me to be different, right? So that you have all these, you know, four different elements and it's like, no, we're here. You're there. It's all good. We're all just different. But but in any other circumstance, in any other classroom, anybody who isn't talkative is going to be left out and shunned. Yep. And feeling self-conscious. Yeah. But now also the parent, they understand their parents too, which is so cool because they can have empathy for, you know, us being our hot messes or whatever, right? It's so cool. I know. And it's coming soon to your neighborhood and it starts with people studying it. So that 4E process is much more advanced. That's a psychological model that I made to be able to, what I did with you was I figured out what was your strong suit by looking at your chart. Then I put you in those positions. You become, it's like there's something called voice dialogue where people give voice to just one part of their character. So it might be like the part of them that loves to drink and then the part of them that loves to work. And the part of them, so, so you isolate one voice. So I, that's how I made it. So I isolated just the water, mm-hmm. the sensitive part, then just the earth, the super practical part. And then you ask the person, tell me about yourself. And it's so cool because you knew. So it was so interesting because <laughs> you have, don't tell everyone, but you have no earth in your chart. Yeah. Shh. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> but you've got people helping you. And that's what you learn is mm-hmm. the missing element. And that's my book. This whole, the whole book yeah. is about, and on page 47, you open the book and you take a short test and you figure out what's my missing element. It doesn't matter if you know astrology. There's no astrology in the book. Yeah. It's just pure elements. And you read that part of the book and then you go, oh, I'm missing earth. Then you open the chapter of earth and it says, hire someone to take care of your expense sheets. So here's the thing. It's like a car. There are four tires on a car. And if one is missing, you're clunk, 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 clunk. So when you asked me, what do you need to feel supported? I'm like, I need earth people because I will die Bingo. without them, right? I, that's when I've always been in an imbalance and not okay is when my support wasn't support. Exactly, because you need earth. I'm like, why am I the hottest mess in earth category? And we'll explain that a little deeper to you guys. How am I supposed to be teaching you how to be organized? I am struggling, you know, uh, aspiring organizer. I'm not. So when I see Elaine's spreadsheets, I want to like make out with the spreadsheets. (laughs) I'm like, oh my God. I told Elaine I was going to lock her in a basement. She was never going to get to leave to her new job in December or January, whenever she's leaving, even though she thinks she's leaving. She's not, but she's going to get locked up. Don't show me you're this good at this stuff. I can't handle it. It's the cutest thing. Is a Capricorn. See what I mean? And I hire Capricorn rising. So you need a job. I hire women. <laughs> almost, no. everyone on, almost everyone on my team is because once you Capricorn know it, rising. Yes. They're the and organizers. They they're the spread, earth. They get off on spreadsheets. Oh I don't even understand those. Me things. And my favorite people in the Excel. planet. Excel. I can't even pull it up on my computer. So Me it's, neither. <laughs> so it's so important wow. that you know. I know Kelsey. You know, Kelsey has let's no look earth up the, um, Let's can't. look up the. Um, well, that's why she needs an Elaine I on the do. team. We I learned do. by accident with Pooja that that was the complimentary mm-hmm. scenario. So you need to ask those people that are coming in for interviews what Excuse they are. Me, what's your cap? Or right what's your now. Rising? Right now. Ask them. Text them right now. I can't. I'm producing. But after I. Well. <laughs> okay, right now. Um, so, so explain to everybody the four elements, and then how we'll go from there. Okay, so you water, and you can use me as an example yes, if you want. You can tell them everything; it's fine. So, Pisces, they don't tell your, anybody your, anything. The rising sign is the soul. The based on your birth time, how we got to that Pisces rising was what was on the horizon when you were born. They literally run out of the hospital room, take a picture of the sky, astrologers, and they establish what was on the eastern horizon at the moment of her birth. It was water. So let me describe water because this is what you are. And the rising sign is the soul. It's called the ascendant. So your soul, as distinct from your ego, you little Gemini, have two different flavors. So water. Water is the part of all of us, and your husband has this in spades, who is very internal and psychic and feels things and cries. And they get emotionally involved and they don't want to talk. They want it to be quiet and they need to feel what they're feeling before they can engage with the other. So if someone comes in, they're like, you're interrupting me. You're making too much noise. Why are you looking at me? You're like, oh my God. But they're so sensitive. They have extra antennas. Mm, Oh my God, so many antennas. Right. You feel everything. Like you can feel people. This is true of Kelsey too. And the low road of that is they get super depressed. They get anxious. 
They feel too much. They eat too much. They feel really vulnerable and they're so, kind of self-conscious and embarrassed by it. So they don't want to cry. They don't want to oh, be the... Hate it. <laughs> see what I mean? So this water element at the low level is really victimized by the human condition and can get very sabotaging because they feel so much and they don't even know if it's theirs. Mm -hmm. So literally, energies can attach themselves to them. They can feel like they're walking through a theater and they're being assaulted by energy. Like a hospital is like a nightmare. Like, what are you doing? Why can't you hold? So we teach them how to deal with water. That's the first element. The high road, by the way, is the Dalai Lama, is meditating. The high road of water is, can you be still? And it doesn't mean being quiet, because some mm -hmm. water signs hate the idea of stillness. It can be a guided meditation. It can be putting music on. Not everyone meditates the same way. No one ever tells you that. Yeah. The second category is air, which is what you and I are, where they talk and they're airheads and they can socialize and they're <laughs> verbalizing and, oh my God, we're so interesting. And we tell stories to ourselves when no one's there and we think we're so funny and we laugh at our own jokes. It's like a little bit like a kid, the yeah. air sign. They're 11 years old. Yep. And they have this quality of innocence innocence, but they forget where they're going. They don't know where they put things. They can't organize anything. They have this charming character, but they keep forgetting. And they feel a little bit like they're losing it. They can't make decisions. They're indecisive. And there's too many ideas going on at the same time. And what mm. should I study? And I want to study astrology, but I'm too busy. It's their favorite line. The evolved version of error is, wait, I'm learning how to use my words so that I don't keep repeating the same stupid stories. We saw this a little bit with Kevin, because mm -hmm. he's double error. I'm not getting caught in my language, putting myself in a box and repeating the same stupid story. I'm not so indecisive and I feel so confused. That's her favorite line. I don't know. That's the low level. The high level is learning how to use words and how to use poetry and how to write like a brilliant writer or a person that studies and teaches. Because I've used my ear as you are, teaching people mm -hmm. and doing it from our own experience and then breaking it down in bite-sized bits. Yeah. And that's part of my school is how do I teach astrology? Simple. Make it accessible like and Like a easy. kid. Yeah. Like we're in second grade. Yeah. I love that part. So they love learning and they love colored pens and they love buying cards and they love giving gifts to people. They're like a little kid. Yeah. And that's the high road of air is delight. The low road is spinny, confused, and disorganized. Mm -hmm. That's the airhead. Third category is earth. And these are the people that are super solid. Like they like the Excel spreadsheets. They like taxes and they like receipts. And they like to put things, they like to go to Costco and they buy like Windex. They get off on going to Costco because there's three bottles Kevin of Windex. Kevin loves going to Target. I'm telling you, it's all he his loves earth. loves Target. Oh my God, I'm going to buy this cheap thing. It's like it's gonna, an outing. It's like outing. It's a holiday. Yes. It's like a, it's like a date. I love Target too, but I don't want to go to Target. Right, that's not a Gemini thing. It's like, an earth people. Yeah. So... He getting, wants to go there for fun. He wants to go to Home Depot and get <laughs> nails and build things and do architecture. And earth people are super grounded. At worst, they're grumpy. So they'll say things like, I work all the time and no one ever does anything I do. And you're like, if I try to do the dishes, you push me out because you don't say it's good enough. Or you take the dishwasher and open up and go, the forks are in the Like, oh my God, you do it. So we let the earth people take control. And at the low level, they're control freaks. And they want to tell you what to do. And they don't feel like they're ever getting it right. This would be your Elaine. Like, I'm trying, I'm trying to get it right, but I'm not doing it well enough. Like, really? Even though they're already an A plus. Exactly. They just think they should be an A plus plus. Yeah, it's the 4.2 average. Yes. And then the, So wait, so the Earth people are Capricorns. What Taurus are they? Taurus and Virgo. Okay. And then the air people. Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. And the water is Cancer. Scorpio and Pisces. I know this Got stuff. It. I'm kind of good at it. Yeah. Okay. So this so <laughs> the, the Earth people at the high level. They are. They share their money, and they're very generous, and they feel good about themselves. Kevin. Yeah, and that's the high road. Oh they're my God, we call them the selfless. human ATM. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. They just want to give everything away, and they're very <laughs> kind, and yes. they're always the ones saying, "I'll help you build that thing." Yep. At the high level, they're philanthropists and they're generous, and they really do give service. At the low level, they complain all the time. Why is it me? Why do I? So you can feel the difference. And the last category is fire, which I have a lot of. Um, and that's enthusiasm and excitement and physical activity. And let's go for a bike ride, then we'll play tennis, and then we'll go for a swim. And at the end of the day, maybe we can go watch a really good that's movie. That's me. And, Wait, do I have a lot of yeah, fire? Yes, you have fire, sister. Oh, oh my okay. God, don't you remember? You just started swearing immediately. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for the swears, guys. It's part of my elements. I forgive it's me. It's fire. Super excited actresses, performers, standing in front of the room, wanting the attention. At the low level, they got a temper. They're feisty, they're blunt, and they stick their foot in their mouth. And you're like, mm -hmm. 
is that really what you want to say right now? Or did you just want to yeah. say that I was, I should lose weight instead of telling me I'm fat. Like they, yeah. they have no filter yeah. and they spontaneously say things that are probably inappropriate at the high level. They're inspirational. And you feel like that's what I did today with your husband. Like they just say shit, like we're done with this right now. And you're, and you're like, thanks yeah. for being there. Oh, yeah. Someone so, had to be the heavy here. <laughs> yes. And it felt so good that they tell the truth yeah. as long as their heart's open and they're not getting angry mm-hmm. and they're speaking from an authentic place. And then fire is really healthy. And and they're very young and they have um, vitality and longevity. So there's a low road and a high road to every element. This is all my book is about. I make it very simple. And you can just read, if you don't want to take the class and learn astrology, if you just learn the elements, which is what happened today, you realize, whoa, yeah, I'm missing earth. She's like, what a revelation. Whoa, guys. And he has no fire. And so he doesn't know how to use his anger. He doesn't yeah. know. So once you understand you're missing an element and you'll get it from the book, seriously, the missing element element right there. And in my on my website, I sign it and I stick a chart in the book. No, you don't. I do. I Aww. send it to people. But if you buy it on Amazon, they'll just give you the book. You know, They'll just mail it to your house and you'd learn, turn it quickly to page 47, do that little test. And the next thing you know, you'll feel like the four wheels in the car are all balanced. Yeah. Well, so for me, just to give them an example, because I've read enough of the comments where sometimes I get nervous when we just talk about my thing and then I'm like, oh, okay, it's just about me. But some people really learn best through hearing the examples, right? So you can hear all this heady stuff, let's say, but then hearing the example. So for me, my sign is I'm double air, You're so triple cute. air, You're double, and triple water, sorry, yes. double water. You're double water and an air sign. So you, the top three, the sun, moon, and rising is all that's included. So you can only be a triple or a double or one. Okay. You are a double water. So you have um, Pisces rising and moon in cancer. So that makes you double water because the top three pillars, Mm -hmm. the sun is your personality. Miss Gemini, you're such a Gemini. The Mm. moon is your emotional inner world, which is the mom energy, moon and cancer. And the rising sign, as I described, is your soul, which is Pisces, which is the, look at you. The Pisces are like the other world. They're like the mystics. They're like, why can't we all love each other? (laughs) It's so cute. And they're so kind. And they're so kind of like flowers and rainbows and cupcakes. Hilarious. But I do have fire in there too. Yes. Your fire is very obvious. The actress in you and the performer. I'm trying to think. Yes. Your life lesson, Saturn and Leo, this lifetime you came in to learn your function, this life is to show up and show off. Yeah. Which is so funny because if you look at all the things you're doing, think of the opposite and usually that's where you need to go. Right. So I've always, I know this sounds hard to believe, but I've always tried to dim and go the opposite way to not get attention and be bold and whatever. So my New Year's resolutions are usually like, be bold, be bold. I'm trying to push myself. That's your Saturn. Because I can be bold in certain arenas with certain people, right, that I know will hold the space and that are okay with it. But for the most part, I've been taught that that was always going to give me a negative reaction. And that's Saturn. So wherever Saturn is, you guys can go look this up. Like that's your life lesson and yours is in fire. So throughout this lifetime, it will be your stretch, your life lesson to see. And as years go on, the good thing about Saturn is it gets better and better as you get old. Because my life lessons fire too. Like I get self-conscious that I shine and stand up and say things. I'm so blunt. Yeah. And, and I've had to learn like... It's okay, Deb, if people don't like you. And yeah, that's a lesson. It's my biggest lesson. Which I was taught that I'm supposed to have everybody like me, so then that gets a little challenging. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So this is the gift of astrology. And the yeah. simple version, you guys, you don't have to, because it's scary. When you look at astrology books, they're so complicated. But in my school, which starts in January, we only do it twice a year, I teach it like in bite-sized bits. So it builds on each other. And Kelsey can speak to this. At the end of level one, it's like, I feel like... Like, can I have some more? People get so addicted because oh, yeah. they fall in love with sure. the acceptance, the like, knowledge like fire. and the like help. When, when I learned that it was okay for me to have people mad at me, that was a bit, and you think I would know this, but it took me years. God, yeah. I'm just getting used to it. And now I can tone it down and I can tone it up. I can just decide. You have control. Yes. Because you're accepting it. Because my observer's on. I watch, I go, Deb, right now, don't say it. Okay, sorry, sorry. (laughs) And it works. My observer is very useful. And that is the ultimate quest of all my work, is having someone step outside and look at yourself objectively without judgments and help people Ex, like get insights. The observer is another word for the soul, but it is the essence of my book. The missing element really should have been the observer. 
Because yeah. once you learn this information and you start watching the kid that won't talk, don't push them. The kid that can't stop talking, listen to them. It becomes this very harmonious, like... It's I'm, like dancing, like there's a push pull, totally. right? To be able to dance, like the first thing they teach you when you start ballroom dance or whatever, they're like, do you feel this? Like I'm pushing against you, you're pushing against me. That's exactly It's yeah. kind of like a, a mutual, like kind of, it's harmony. Yes. It's exactly what, I'm so funny because my Libra rising, I wish everybody just got along and, and yeah. we knew who not to sit next to. Like there's some people that you don't get along with, but let that be. It's yeah. the whole thing about diversity and racism. Why do we want everyone to be the same? Yeah. Think about it. It's an impulse of the human nature to want you to be just like me, which you kind of remind me, let me tell the truth. Yeah, we are but, very yeah, we have, we have the, the little, But then, so we have a natural connection. Yeah. And the people that don't talk, I find them super interesting. And I've learned as an astrologer to stand next to them and just don't talk. And then they open up. But if you go over there and go, what are you thinking? Tell me everything. How is your, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. nuisance. But if you stand next to it, if you learn from astrology that this person doesn't talk and you match them, to your point, and mm -hmm. you dance on their terms, they melt. Everyone mm -hmm. opens up. It's kind of like a secret. I feel sometimes like I have the key to opening up people's psyches. Yeah. I kind of do. I get it. I get it. And then I fall in love. Because ultimately, every human, honest, this is true, every soul that comes to this planet wanted to learn about love. Because that's the essence of planet Earth, believe it or not. And while we get distracted... By the million, like the earth is so distracted, money and practicality and paying the rent and making sure you look good and where's the car. That's just a distraction ultimately. And that's why water is the most important element. That's what you represent. Like sweet, kind love above everything is the point. I sound like a kumbaya or something, but it's real. If we just did love like yeah. that, I am so in love with the humans. I know they bug me. And I don't like when they're around too much, <laughs> but when I get to do a reading for someone or I teach someone astrology and I see the lights come on, it's kind of like Christmas. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine giving people yeah. this gift and watching them wake up inside the dream? Yeah, I see. That's what I was saying. That's what lights me up. Like last night I was at a dinner and I had these women that I was kind of chatting with about health and all the things that I'm learning about health and the things that we don't know about health and that we need to teach people about health. And they were... Their eyes were lit and I go, I'm going to shut up now. And they're like, no, please keep talking. And I go, really? You want me to keep talking? Oh, okay, cool. Let's, I got so much more to tell you. You got to learn this. You got to learn that. And I learned this on my show, blah, blah, blah. And so I have, I have that same kind of, you know, feeling, which is super cool. And that's the gift of whatever you do and you fall in love with and you share it with the other, it begins to become contagious. Yeah. You could be woodworking or, you know, whatever it is that and you, you love. And you must see it so much on your show when people come in and they really are in love with what they're doing. Yeah. And you can feel it. It's like a tickle. It like tickles you. I think part of my gift this lifetime is I do like you get so excited. I have like little, I sometimes feel like I'm, I don't know how this age thing works. Cause I, like today, <laughs> that was the most fun being outside in front of their pool and watching you, watching the lights come on and then yeah. watching Kevin. It's like, a, it's like, I think that's what life is for. To yeah. fall in love, to turn your energy up, to remember who you are. Hello. I don't know. Is that, am I confused? Because this is exactly all I think it's about. No, I do. I, I ended my first book was I thought we were all here to help each other. And I think it was funny because we were having this moment. You're we like, how did I end up here? She was literally having like a moment. How did I end up here? I don't I don't do this. Like, I know I'm doing this for free. And this and I go, <laughs> and she's like, I don't get it. This never happens. I'm like, yeah, but you're in an energy vortex where we give everything for free and we do for others. So now we're meeting on the same kind of thing. And you were meant to be here for so many reasons that you have bumped into. I've, we were definitely in need of you without even knowing it, even though I always knew in a sense, but um, poor Kevin's really needing some assistance. And so... Um, the divine orchestration that brings these moments... you got to trust and follow yes, the breadcrumbs. Yes, yes. And so please know, this is really important. Every single day the sun comes up, and every single day we know where the moon is. It's the most trustworthy system on this universe. The planets never deviate. They're completely reliable. There's no alternate plan. And when you realize that there's such a beautiful divine organization, you have to start thinking, what's the implication of that? Are we divinely orchestrating? 
Is someone helping us? Are there guides watching us? Yes. And when the mind starts back to the first part of our conversation, if this was left to us, this architecture called astrology across all time, then you have to assume that someone's watching us and has our best interests. Mm -hmm. And that thought, take a deep breath, because while people are listening right now, they think something's wrong with them. Yeah. And lots of people think something's wrong with Earth. And yes, we are in a crisis, as said the astrologer. And I have a podcast, too. It's all about helping people that I don't believe in astrology podcast. That's the name of it. Is that what it's called? <laughs> I don't remember that. That's funny. Okay. The I don't believe in astrology <clears throat> podcast because you don't have to believe in it. It believes in you. The stars don't depend on you understanding them. They're going to give you their love. And love can't be seen. And it's <sighs> waiting for you to lean in. Wait, it's like love is unconditional. They're unconditional. I know. Whoa. They love you forever. Your soul's in love with you. You've been coming incarnating, whether you believe in reincarnation or not. This is a long movie, and we're at the tail end of a cycle, an era. The planet is coming into a critical moment. Physically, she's got some problems, but the gift is there are futurists who are here and are preparing to help us in the transition. So for those of you scared or you're negative or anxiety, believe that the sun's coming up in perfect order, the moon is completely trustworthy, and there is somebody watching and protecting you. Whether your mind believes me or not, I don't yeah. care. Because <clears throat> I know for sure. Magic. When you say someone's listening to this and they think that they're wrong or they're doing wrong, or what was the line you said? They, they feel f- anxious. They feel scared. Something's wrong with them. Something's wrong with them. So I think, like, we all have blocks. And I think one of the things that I learned today that was so cool is... Um, and we shared a similarity in that in that space of not feeling like you're good enough, right? Um, or you know enough that you know enough. So I can. How can I start a business? What do I know about business? I'm not. I don't know how to do P and L reports and this report and that report. And it's like, who am I to think I can do this? But then I I look at people. And I go, Kevin, if they could do it, why can't I do it? Exactly. I'm blocking myself by sabotaging myself into thinking I can't rather than just going off and doing it. Like just, just go off. What was, um, the, the shark we had on the show, Barbara Corcoran. Oh, Barbara. Yeah. And she said, she goes, take it to the streets. She goes, you don't need to have all the, 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 this thing filed, the, the trademark filed and you don't need to have the website, whatever. Just take it to the streets, start selling the shit and make it work and see what people say. And I was like, so inspired by that conversation um, but then we forget, right? And we go back into our programming. Our programming says, you Should. know, the self-sabotager, which is my lack of earth, Bingo. is my little sabotager, my little asshole that says, Maria, you're not good at spreadsheets. You're not good at Excel. You're not good at being organized. You're not good at this stuff. This is not what you're meant to do. So now I'll just talk about it. Oh yeah, I really want to like make a clothing line. I, I've been cutting my own clothes and designing stuff lately and I have this urge to do it, but I don't know how to do that. What am I going to do? How am I going to do this? How am I going to put this together? Oh, it's not, not going to work. No one's going to want to buy my stuff. And you, know, you have all this negative speak in your head. And simply follow your passion. If you've got a natural fascination, it happened to me too. I was doing astrology for so long, never imagined I'd be online having a school, but all I did was just follow the dots and never gave up on my passion. Mm-hmm. So if your passion is design and it starts to show up, or you're starting to paint, or you're starting to cook, just keep it going and follow your heart. And here's the question of the day. How can I be of service? If you simply ask that question all the time, how can I be of service? Oh, I could design new clothes and inspire women to know how simple this could look. That would be your inspiration and your desire to serve. It's as simple as praying. I I have a very strong value in asking for help. Mm, Me too. They're just waiting for us. So Yes, it's a very profound thing you've said. The sabotager wraps itself up in negative self-talk. Mm-hmm. And once the observer's on and you catch that little gremlin, and then you reprogram it with, hold on a minute, I'm going to ask for help. And I'm going to keep following my passion. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be in service. All those positive, pure intentions creates manifestation. I call it manifestation. Women can manifest, men can manifest simply by a sincere open-heartedness that says, I'm falling in love. Like you love designing, just keep doing it. And then you tell people, and the next thing you know, this designer who shows up that knows how to manufacture will come and say, God, Maria. But people don't get that far. They stop before Mm -hmm. they get to that point. You're even afraid to say it, right? Most people are afraid to even say what they want to do because they're so scared of what that might look like. So, So what was cool about today 
is getting to understand the the different sides, the different aspects of me, right? So I understand now that I'm lacking in the earth, which is why I'm so desperate to be in nature and I love nature so much. I bought this house. I didn't even have to look at the house. I just saw the front yard. I saw citrus trees. I'm like, this is my house. And Kevin goes, what are you talking about? You haven't even seen it. I go, I don't care what the house looks like inside. I don't need anything but these trees. That's I need so nature. And so... um knowing that I'm lacking in the earth and that I don't have that element, but then also understanding my water is my superpower, is my my psychic powers, my my ability to to see things and and manifest things and, and then hear things and get direction. Get direction. Like you said, I'm I'm asking God for answers and they're coming. I'm asking for signs. This morning sign was a feather. You showed up with feather earrings and you asked me to go get a feather. And I'm like, where am I going to get a feather? Oh, I have feather earrings. I forgot. I have one pair of feather earrings. Perfect. So, um, so I get the signs. Synchronicity is always talking to you. Yeah. And then the, the air is, oh gosh, the air is happening live time. Look at you. You got a microphone in front of your mouth. Yeah. Chatty Kathy. <laughs> Yeah, oh, that I'm was a such communicator. A, that was such an airhead moment. That <laughs> I was, know, I... You did air lifetime. <laughs> that was the cutest thing. Yes, you are a chatty Kathy, and your gift of speaking and your rhythm and how you use your words makes us all listen to you talk forever. I was like, this is dangerous. I'm listening to her talk, and we've got to keep going, but I love her stories. <laughs> <laughs> You're, You're trying good. to keep the train on time? I was, I was. But you'd get kept, sucked in? That's I kept funny. saying to you, when you, got, when you moved to Erin, you sat yeah. in that position, and then you just like lit up like a Christmas tree? Yeah. And while you were in Earth, you were like, I don't know. Isn't it funny? So so guys, let me give you the visual. And, and Kelsey's going to post today the Instagram shot of us doing this. So you'll see the visuals. But... She has a placard that says, that's basically the air placard, the water placard, fire, and earth. And you sit behind them. And what you realize is once you're sitting behind them, you're actually getting in that mode. So once I got behind fire, I was like, you know, everything would be fine if that little asshole <laughs> earth over there wouldn't stop making me second guess myself and, and be nasty to myself and tell me that I can't do things. And then I was like, fire. And then she's like, uh, that's fire. And I'm like, Oh my God, I just you called completely... earth a little asshole. That's being blunt. That's what fire is. And so you you end up behind the element and you start embodying, half, embodying that element instantly. Like right now, I'm I'm in my water and my air at the same time. That's exactly But I understand right. that now. I wouldn't have never known so that. so deeply. What I notice about you, even in this interview, is you have your water's always there. You're waiting. You know, some people interrupt. Mm -hmm. And some I have had so many podcast interviews in my career. And one of your gifts is you're you're actually feeling me and listening to me, and then you're using real time experience, which is your air speaking truth. It's not just talking hot air. Mm -hmm. You're talking out of your direct experience. So I just want to say the four E process is not easy to find. People are gonna be like, I want that session. You can work with me independently. If you <laughs> I mean it's this is such an unusual occurrence, only in, in Maria's honor. Um, but it is something that I will be teaching when I grow up. How about that? that oh my god, sense. I'm dead. <laughs> I'll be teaching you when I grow up. That's amazing. Yeah. Because you're really like twenty eight too. <laughs> I am. How old do you think you are internally right now? I'm, like if you were I to give I'm your age, I'm somewhere about eighteen or nineteen. I, I mean, 19. I can drive, and I okay. and I and I'm just getting ready to drink. Yeah, because I was like first when she asked me that question, "How old are you?" I said, "I'm an eleven year old boy," <laughs> but then I'm also like a twenty eight year old woman. I think. Yeah, I think I'm like just finishing high school and starting. to... I, I haven't grown up. I know, but I'm interested in wisdom. So I'm not dismissing that I like growing up because mm -hmm. everyone goes, I don't want to ever grow up. I want to grow up, but I just, <laughs> I just seem to, I, I want to grow up. I want to grow up. I want to, I want to, like I, I would like to be, uh, I want to go to the ice cream shop, mommy. <laughs> with no one else there with me. I want to yeah. drive myself. I'm at the point now, I, for many, many years, I was codependent because I'm Libra rising and I couldn't do anything. I was just, it was embarrassing. I was so dependent on having friends around and people. I was super social and COVID really served me because I was left alone on an island in Hawaii. Sounds funny, but my kids were to there, be you, Deborah. And, and, well, it was, a, it was lonely. And I found yeah. out, I was so surprised after I walked past lonely, it turned into yummy. And I was like, what? I found this deep entrance into myself, which is the clue that I'm growing up because I, I could never now, I have no problem being alone. I know. I've just discovered it this summer. Like about I love a week it. ago. <laughs> it makes me so happy. Actually, I shouldn't say just the summer, because there was a period when my mom was passing, I had to come back here for a month, maybe 
maybe three weeks or so. And I was alone and it was amazing. I know. And I was like, wow, Kevin's been like Mr. Alone. So I didn't understand him. I'm like, what a weirdo. Like I need people. I need... Now I'm like, oh my God, I love being alone. And that's alone. your water. That's your soul. Pisces loves water. People love being alone. Air people need someone to talk to or they'll be talking to themselves. Yeah. Earth people like people to get things done, but then they want them to go away when they're done working. And fire people really need people because they have to be able to be entertained. So I came to realize that this is a wisdom piece. This is the gift of getting older now that I'm growing up, um, that there is something to be said about the inner world and really coming to peace with what I know to trust which is spirit. Like I've come to a deep, profound sense of trust. And that is something about me being heading towards 70. There is something to be said about this much life experience to find out it's really safe here. Yeah. I know it sounds crazy because everyone feels so scared and they lock everything and they're always getting paranoid and there's this whole thing about insurance. And I live in a world where I'm like, it's okay. It's safe. Do you think... Living in Hawaii helps that though. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> if you yes. lived where we lived, I think you'd be a little bit. You're probably right. Like we're like, oh gosh, how many robberies did we have this week? Like it's it's so crazy. It, it may have something to do with that, but I also believe on the inside because I grew up in Detroit. I, something on my insides is really deeply, profoundly trusting mm -hmm. that life does really care about me, and it's because. But why would it care about you and not someone else? Because I pray every day. I I call in the angels. I'm I. Get but there my, are people who pray. I'm challenging only for the person like who's this. listening. There are people who pray every day and bad things happen to them. I guess it's changing the angle of bad things happen. It's just what happened to you with all the physical ailments. You had to use, I don't, I've changed my notion of good and bad. Okay. Because I just had a health crisis and it, I know it was bad during it, but it didn't take long for me to turn those lemons into lemonade. And yeah. it became the, such a gift. So I think at this age, I've gotten so good at the heavy lifting that I'm not scared anymore. That's what it is. That's the difference. It's not that bad things aren't going to happen. As you know that you I can are handle anything. able to handle anything, which I know now yes. I'm able to handle anything. And you know that it's coming for you, not to you. It's the catalyst for change. It's the portal for the next level. It's so beautiful. It's all of that because that's how I feel. Like it, things can still knock me down. And I had something this summer that really knocked me down for a solid, let's say two and a half weeks, three weeks. And then I got up and I'm like, oh, this is the best thing that ever happened to me. My point. And so, so I know. So I think it's, you're right. It's a rewrite about what is good and bad. It's a notion that people get stuck in. And as you get older, as I've become older, I've realized that I've gotten through so much trauma. We tough. And I really got wisdom. I feel like I in my when you're saying my eyes, I feel like the kid in me never got taken out. No, somehow, how did it not leave us? I don't know, because we're Gemini's. I think the same thing. And I say, Kevin, I, I don't know how they didn't break me. I thought I was broken. He goes, Maria, he's like, No, you still you still got it. You still have the sparkle. I'm like, oh my God, thank God. I think it's just and I want to invite the whole audience to listen and to stop for a minute and think. What is your relationship with faith? Like, what is your relationship with asking the question, what am I supposed to be learning? As soon as that question is the front question, how can I serve? What should I learn? And then I have faith that the sun's coming up tomorrow and that I, someone called spirit loves me. I, I made up this mantra that, they, like, sometimes I ride my bike and I hear myself say, they love me. They just love me. I'm like, Deborah, who are you talking to? But it, it helps reaffirm. Yeah this very strong inner sense that whatever life hands me, I mean, there's a few things that I've said to God, don't you dare, <laughs> like that would not be nice. But other than that, there's probably just one thing about my kids. But other than that, yeah, like I, you can hand, I can handle, you can go ahead. Yeah, no, I've, I've said it to God. I'm like, God, please no more. And then more comes. I'm like, oh God, okay. And then you All keep, right, but, you're, but you're a champion. Look at you, Maria. Yeah. And you're sharing with us how you've healed your body. Yeah. And I'm sharing with you how I fell in love and how I've helped people fall in love with themselves. And yeah. I don't think there's anything more important than the health of our body and the heart of our own soul. It's true. I think it's it's the reframing of how we handle life, like not being surprised by problems. They're there for us. Like there was, there's so many things in my life where I realize okay, that came to help me. It, it, they're, they're, they're gentle pushes to the direction you're supposed to go into, right? So when you get some kind of ailment, it's like, well, I have to change the diet now. Well, you can look at that like my life is over and it sucks. And by the way, I've done those kinds of things too for a minute, but then you realize, ah, 
what if this came to heal the other stuff? And this is the catalyst for that. Like now I'm going to now eat better and be healthier and then everything else is going to fix itself. But I was never going to change my diet to that extreme and to that level without, without it. the symptom. I know. So you have to, you, it, but that comes with a lot of like work, right? That's what we do here every single day. If I wasn't doing the show every day and I wasn't exposed to people like this every day, I wouldn't be in the vortex to see things like that. That's true. So the the normal everyday person who's not in that kind of vortex isn't surrounding themselves with those kinds of people will do what everyone else is doing out there. So the 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 collective are going into that negative space, why me? The 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 victim mentality, right? And they can't get out of it. So I'm not saying I don't go into a victim mentality ever. It's just I'm able to pull myself out pretty quick. Because I realized how, how I asked myself, how could this be happening for me, not to me? Because I learned it at Tony Robbins. It stuck with me. Life is happening for you, not to you. So every time something bad happens, so beautiful. I say, how could this be happening for me, not to me? And then I'll start researching. I'll Google and I'll find something that like some crumb to hold on to, some research study or something. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe it's this. And then I'd rather believe that than live in the negative, realist, whatever world over here that's miserable. I'd rather believe in hope and possibility. And then I know also that we're energetic beings that carry vibration. So if I'm in that vibration, well, then maybe I'll be pushing myself towards that answer. Exactly. And towards that that end. And that's how I ended up here. Like vibration is drawn to like vibration. And if you really do that, keep your attention. So for those of you that aren't happy with your friends or your relationship, you have to ask yourself, what vibration am I putting out? Like, if you can't find positivity, that's because you're not positive. I have the richest now, my company is run with a bunch of women that I can't believe how cool they are, but I've, I've vibrated them in, mm-hmm. similar for you with your people that you work with. So you have to ask yourself, if you see negativity everywhere, you got to ask yourself, am I being negative? Because that's the distinction you just described, the frequency of what you carry. Mm-hmm. And I have really learned how to be grateful for all things. I know it sounds so corny. But I am, someone taught me this when I was in my 20s, be grateful for everything. I was like, everything? And he said, everything. And I've never left it behind. So if you find that the answer to that question is that, yes, I must be putting something out there that's negative, how do you change? Then you listen to Maria. You come into these shows. You find where the people are. That frequency is different. You go to workshops where you watch them shifting their energy and you go, I'm going to do that too. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Yeah, like take up vibration. a meditation practice, take an astrology class to get to know yourself better. And that's yeah. my favorite answer. Go outside yeah. and notice the sun. Go watch the sunrise. I mean, I, it's true. I live in Hawaii and it's only a walk, but I never, I am so respectful to yeah. the elements, to the outward world where it's beauty. Now, I know it's a little tricky in Hawaii because it's so pretty, but I, <laughs> but I can never, you know, people think I'm crazy because I start smelling flowers. I mean, I've lived there for almost 35 years. I'm like, I'm in love with... So I, But I asked myself, how did I end up here? Oh, that's... It's like, how did I end up in your yeah. backyard? Because why? Because my heart was open and I was to- totally devoted to matching and following the vibration. But there's a million reasons that people say I could never live in Hawaii. I can never be an astrologer. I can never be Maria. Really? Mm-hmm. All you've got to do is say yes. It's to your point about the sabotager. But you can't bypass. I want to make a distinction. People want to skip over the negative. You can be upset when you get a bad diagnosis. Oh, my God. You can be upset when your father just hurt you and you walked away feeling angry. Your best friend betrayed you. Yep. Don't Do not bypass the human condition. However, at a certain point, the alarm goes off and you're like, I've been in this stew for too long. I'm overcooking negativity, and now i got to go ask for help. But don't expect that your spirituality doesn't include anger. You you saw me today. I get pissed off. I like it now, but I know that I haven't bypassed. I'm authentic. So sometimes I recently just had some physical ailments, and I had the alarm clock go off, and I always pray, my, my prayer is don't, Get it too loud, or don't hurt me when you're going to wake me up. Like if it's a, so, they gave me a little nudge, and they said, "Deborah, this was my message. You're going too fast." And then my Achilles started to really hurt, like so bad for months. I was like, "Oh, you want me to slow down? Could you just send the memo? <laughs> like, did you have to?" And then I got it, and yeah. I really didn't. I got the healers in place. So first, you get the crisis. This is in my book, the first chapter of the book. First comes the crisis, then comes the humility. There's two kinds of people, mm-hmm. the humble ones and the ones about to be humble. 
Then after you pass that marker, you start to realize, I can listen to Maria. I can listen to these podcasts. I can lift my frequency. And once you make that a practice, maybe it's meditation, maybe it's singing, maybe it's gardening. I don't know. You know your chart, all of you listening. If you pay attention to your interest that comes instinctively, like some people can, I don't know, I don't have much earth either. They go in the kitchen and they clean the whole thing up in literally split time and they don't value it. They're like, that's just cleaning up. No, you do earth effortlessly. Mm -hmm. Value what you do effortlessly. Don't dismiss, dismiss it and understate it. So everyone's got gifts that they take for granted. And when you figure it out, this is why I love astrology. Like you're, we are really good at talking. Yeah. We made a business out of talking. Yeah. But then you, once you know, you can work with yourself and not against yourself. And then you follow the flow. So if you're missing earth, are you trying to incorporate more earth to balance yourself? How are you handling the missing Going element? outside, being at what you just figured out. Go into nature. That was a short answer. It was instinctual to mm -hmm. you. Hire people that are grounded. Or, like I had to learn earth because I run a business. It's a P, profit and loss. It's P&L. <laughs> so I had to figure out what's a P&L. And then I studied it. And I made a decision on my part to say, I don't have earth. I'm running a business, Deborah. You've got to have someone sit down neck. And I, and my best friend has all this earth. And I'm like, I call her. I'm like, just whisper. And I take notes because I've had yeah. to learn it. It was yeah. unnatural. Yeah. No, we have to get good at some of it. It doesn't mean that, you know, you're, you're like, okay, I'm just going to farm all this stuff out. You have to know no. it too. So here's how, but let me show you water people. If they can't cry and they've lost their sensitivity, they watch sad movies. This is part of the book. You learn how to activate your tears again. That's really important. Ear are people that stop doing relationships. They stop talking. You go and you go to the Starbucks and you say to your neighbor, tell me about you. You pretend you're interested. <laughs> like you activate the earth people. We learn the skill set or we hire people. Fire people. You go stand next to someone who's super excited. Don't judge them when they get loud. And you say, I want to be like that. And you practice. Kind of simple. It's pretty awesome. And it's a real true way of balancing and bringing us back to who, how to make this world work. You cannot work with three elements, just like you can't work with three wheels. That one wheel screws yeah. up the whole thing. Yeah, I know. And it's, it's, nice, to, it's right. nice to understand it. Um, I, I can't thank you enough for today. This was such a gift and such a blessing and so amazing. Divine timing. Um, super divine timing. And, uh, and just, like I said, the gift of kind of really understanding myself at a really critical time even more, right? Because this is what I do every day. I'm always trying to learn myself and get better and all of that. So I feel like I'm armed with how to unblock the block. And that block's been there. I've been chipping away at it. But I'm like, ooh, I think I have the sledgehammer now. <laughs> and, and then do it with compassion and patience because yeah. Geminis aren't patient. Mm -hmm. And just know that the fact that you're aware of this now and your observer's on and you can watch yourself, you'll be able to find balance. And then the yeah. game becomes so easy. But I think I'm in the moment where it's not just observing because observing sometimes eventually fades to I forgot. <laughs> I think I'm in the point of like, Learning. I've already been aware of this. Now I really am getting the, the point hammered home and I got the sledgehammer <laughs> and this is the time. Like it's time, it's go time. So I'm really, really excited. I'm so thankful. I don't know who orchestrated all this, <laughs> the magical beings that we can't see, but thank you so much. Thank for, you. It's just been a pleasure and so divine timing. Yeah. It's every single part of it, me coming to LA and not even knowing that. Yeah, all the cool stuff that's happening for you while you're here and... Um, and I know Kevin's super grateful too. So guys, we're going to put everything on the uh, summary for you to know about uh, Deborah's website, DebraSilvermanAstrology.com. You'll get her courses, her school, her books, everything, um, her IG and everything else that you need all in the summary. In the meantime, we're going to close this out. Be nice people, make good choices and be present. This podcast and all related content published or distributed by or on behalf of Maria Menunos or MariaMenunos.com is for informational purposes only and may include information that is general in nature and that is not specific to you. Any information or opinions expressed or contained herein are not intended to serve as or replace medical advice, nor to diagnose, prescribe, or treat any disease, condition, illness, or injury, and you should consult the healthcare professional of your choice regarding all matters concerning your health, including before beginning any exercise, weight loss, or healthcare program. If you have or suspect you may have a healthcare emergency, please contact a qualified healthcare professional for treatment. 
Any information or opinions provided by a guest expert or host featured within website or on company's podcast are their own, not those of Maria Menounos or the company. Accordingly, Maria Menounos and the company cannot be responsible for any results or consequences or actions you may take based on information or opinions.